The car is not in the best of cosmetic shape, but it is fun to drive. And this car is not my daily car either. I daily my bike. Like, I only will not take my bike if I physically can't or I have to carry something. Which is pretty ironic because the car I bought for rainy and days I need to haul stuff, I bought the smallest car you possibly can. So now I'm gonna show you guys around the car a little bit. So. Clearly, first thing you notice is it does not have a uh, side mirror. I think it's that's illegal. I, I could be wrong. But just looking around the car, uh, it's pretty low. And, eh, not much room to go. And it actually did at one point have a uh, front lip, which is, which is right here. So this thing was so beat up. Like, I mean, that's like not even usable at this point. Now it's just a. It's a piece of junk, so I'm gonna toss that. I might end up next spring buying a new front lip and side skirts for it, but I'm just not sure. Next thing is there is there is some uh, some wear on the side of the wheels, this is the front driver side. Back driver side is clean. The rear passenger side has about as much as the front driver side does, and then the worst one. Is the uh, it's the front passenger side? It's got a decent amount of wear on it. Uh, he, the dude I bought it from didn't buy these wheels. He bought these wheels separate, so I believe the dude probably got against some curbs at some point. Uh, I think I can just paint that. That shouldn't be that bad to fix. The one thing though is right here. I don't know how you can see that. Uh, the little bit of the fender actually pulled out because this wheel is actually riding lower than the other side is. So I'm probably gonna have to put this thing on jacks and adjust the coils. These are, I forget what kind of coils these are. They're nice coils on here. And these wheels and tires are basically brand new. Like, I mean, this car does have some camber on it and there is like zero camber wear. And I'm sorry, I'm dirty. I'm sorry, I just took it in the grass. Probably wasn't the best idea. And speaking of the camber, it just, since this isn't even, this is a wide body too. You can see right there, that's, that's the wide body now. Uh, so this thing, that fender's bowed out a lot, but still with the camper. If you're anywhere not on asphalt or any sort of like that so that's not very good but the interior is pretty clean I cleaned it all out uh, when I bought it um, just just the ISO so you guys can see uh, it's got like the nicest shifter like I've ever seen like there's a short throw shifter a super nice weighted shift knob it's actually obviously using an OEM shift boot some crappy thing I picked up at AutoZone. I'm probably gonna get the actual OEM nice leather one because the actual the transmission cover casing, I forget what it's called. It's actually pretty wide on here and you can see those wires. It's got power windows. The car the key isn't on so I couldn't show you, but it's got the power window conversion, which I thought was kind of funny. Um the interior is actually pretty pretty clean, like and this car only has 124,000 miles on it, which is which is pretty, pretty good, in all honesty, for a car that's over 20 years old. Uh, it's got a harness bar. Right now I got these jerry-rigged, uh, got these totally jerry-rigged harnesses here. This the, it's right there, see, I got a four point. And then there's only one eye bolt, can't really see it. Yeah, you can kind of see it. There's only one eye bolt on that side, and there's not a spot right now to put the other eye bolt. So it's actually just like underneath the seat. And then these two, they're actually just looping underneath the seat and grabbing on. So I think it works enough, considering 
this the driver's side doesn't even have a, a normal seatbelt thing, but the passenger does. So that's why I put this on there, just for now. I eventually plan on getting like racing seats and full harnesses for maybe both sides. Probably not just for the driver because I already have a good enough OEM passenger. Oh, check this out. Yeah, the center console is like the perfect size to fit my phone. Like, it's actually epic. But here is the one thing that gave me a really bad spook. Turn the car on for you. So there's obviously a check engine light on. That is because... Also, I have to remove the fuses. This is the sound the car makes when the key is in and the door is open. It is the most annoying thing. And then you gotta like jiggle the steering wheel to get the key out. Oh, whatever. Um, so, if you've never heard what a straight piped four cylinder sounds like, It's not good. No, no bueno. And I do actually, it's registered as a collector. Currently I don't have this temporary plate on right now. And I actually got loopholed by the EPA on this car because normally in Wisconsin at least, uh, any car 20 years or older, like that one, that 1974 Beetle, my mom's pride and joy. Uh, most of the time, any car 20 years or older, you can get collector's plates and you can just get away. You don't have to do emissions. So when I bought the car, I was like, oh, you know, 1996, 2017. Even with the year step back thing, this, you know, I can get collector's plates. And I did get collector's plates on it. But EPA's new law, any car, no matter if you have collector's plates on it, 1996 or newer has to have emissions tested. So I thought I was gonna have to get rid of the car, unfortunately, because I didn't want to pour a bunch of money into it. But I guess I'm gonna keep it. Um, Five hundred bucks to put a full new O2 sensors, cat muffler, full new system in there, which I'm actually really gonna enjoy because that's gonna get rid of the truck engine light, obviously, because the only reason that's on is because it doesn't have the O2 sensors in. And this car is so loud, like I hate it because this car is so much fun to drive once you hit like six to seven k RPMs, like right at that red line range is when this car gets fun. I mean, it's not a fast car by any means, but it's a fun car. But I don't even want to take it to that rev range because it's so incredibly loud. The exhaust thing should be fixed in uh, about a week, week and a half maybe. The parts, some parts are just gonna get ordered tomorrow and then some of them are shipping Wednesday. So also for being a Wisconsin car, it also kind of scared me that when I first looked under it, uh, this is all I saw. What's that? Jesus out of me. But the uh, the actual frame itself is not that rusty. Uh, the struts on the back have a little bit on them, but everything from the back wheels forward is clean. Like all the front struts, which I've heard rusty front Miata struts can be a problem, they're clean and the whole frame is pretty good. So there was just that weird little piece. Uh, that the dude installed, I guess, to keep the straight pipe up. That's all messed up, but I don't care because that's gonna be tossed out when the new exhaust goes in anyway. And then that little piece, I think it's the bottom of the trunk. That's just rusty, but other than that, like, I mean, the body's in pretty good shape. Especially with the wide body. I really like the wide body. Because it's a subtle, it's, it's subtle. It's not, it's not too much, you know? And the fenders actually rolled pretty well. Like, I mean, there's no, no sharp edges or anything like that. Like, I don't know. I like it. So I already took my microphone off, so I apologize for the bad sound quality. I just forgot, you know, this one last point, big point in the video I wanted to say is I don't know what I want this car to be. Uh, I didn't even mention it. It has a welded differential, which makes this thing so much fun because I take it on the rainy days and 
I take that on the sunny days, obviously. So on the rainy days, when it's slick, I'm not gonna destroy my tires at the back end. I can just slide around everywhere. It's, it's a blast. But I mean, it's, it's kind of on that line. Like, is it a stance car? Not really. It's not like slammed to the ground. It's not totally cambered out either. I mean, is it a drift car? I mean, not entirely. But I mean, is it a roadster? I mean, it can take corners just fine. I mean, if you kick the clutch, obviously the back end will kick out. But I mean, taking back roads at speeds, this thing's a dream. I mean, I mean it's a Miata. So I don't really know what I want this car to turn into. Um, I guess we'll just have to see, I guess. I'm leaning towards more of a, like, all kind of a culmination of all three. Like a drift, road, and bit of like a stance type vibe here which is it kind of already is but with a little cleaning up i think this thing can be really really nice the thing that's hopefully gonna change the zock channel because i've been uploading so much on pav and it's been so much more fun for me i just don't even want to make videos on zock anymore but i kind of wanted a separation of content because i kind of want zock to turn into more of an automotive type channel of stuff like that more car shows individual stuff working on this thing and hopefully that's what some of you will enjoy. So that's what's here to come later. Um, I don't think I'm gonna do much to the bike, to be honest. I really like where this bike is at right now. Yeah, so hit that subscribe button. If you're new, hit that like button if you enjoyed. Uh, be ready for much more Miata and other car slash bike related content coming in the future. Uh, that's about all I got for you guys today. So I will see you guys next time.